Very good. Now, this is an attempted comedy. If you don't laugh, I'll cry. <laughs> because comedy is new to me, right? So basically, I'm shaking with excitement. Is a metaphorical and literal for me. For many of you, it's only metaphorical. For me, it's both. So that I have an unique advantage there. So first of all, I want to dedicate this act to my wife, uh, Kavita. She is not here. She could, could have been here. She is not here because we traveled for eight hours from a temple. She must be tired. We have been married for 30 years. Don't ask for any marriage tips because it's only 30 years. So as a husband, I have still a lot to learn. So, <laughs> I'll get there sooner, sooner than later. So um, I have not seen God, but my wife Kavita is like goddess in mood swings. <laughs> she brings the goddess part all by herself, but I bring the mood swings in her. <laughs> so what happened was uh, years ago, only once, she asked me to bring something from the grocery store. She said three things, tomato, tur dal, and uh, tamarind. I got, I'm a writer, no? I got fascinated with alliteration. Tomato, turdal, tamarind. Tomato, turdal, tamarind. But when I went, reached the store, I forgot what the alliteration was for. Then I thought, I know it's alliteration, but I don't remember which letter it started. I said, is it avocado, asparagus, and asapotida? No. No, that is, I don't even know what asapotida is, so. I, I didn't want to go back empty-handed because I'm a smart person, right? So I, I took beans, brinjal, and beetroot. That was the last time she sent me to grocery store. And I also find that my wife is a little bit peculiar. In the sense, uh, if I do 80% of the job, I expect at least 20% appreciation. Instead, I get 100% complaint. I'll give an example. She had a work call at 11.15, and then uh, she said, switch on the gas stove at 11.15, exactly. I switched on the gas, but didn't light the stove. 80% of the job is switching the gas on, right? And in 10 minutes, it was all, the house was smelling. And I didn't realize, I thought somebody is doing something outside. So uh, something is wrong, but I never uh, bothered to say anything. And then she came home, came out fuming. What is this? You are not switched on the gas stove. I said, 80% of the job is switching on the gas. She wouldn't understand. So that's why she, she still loves me. So that's why this act is dedicated. I call her marriage an arranged miracle rather than arranged marriage. Because with this, we, we could have been dead and gone with the gas stove incident, but we are still alive. So, um, most of the time when I'm making, cracking jokes on uh, Parkinson's, right? So, basically people don't laugh and I get worried. Sometimes I ask, they, they tell that, uh, you know, what will other people think of me, around me, right? So, I'll tell a story. So, whenever there is a uh, clinical trial, Parkinson's patient rush as if we are angels fear to tread. Because we, uh, there is no cure for Parkinson's. So we always think something is there, we can try it. One such uh, clinical trial was called Repentrol. I am saying this so that just in case somebody wants it, don't use it. <laughs> so this was to stop shaking. And uh, it worked actually, each tablet cost about $26. And then uh, I had 50, 60 of them, and I took one. It stopped shaking and stopped everything <laughs> for seven hours. I was frozen. And then uh, for some it's like I was in my own prison in my own body. And then finally I recovered and called the doctor and said, uh, this, this is what happened. I said, he asked me, uh, what are you doing with the other 59 tablets? Please throw it. I said, no, I'm not going to throw it. I said, what are you going to do? When I'm doing a stand-up comedy at Verbindan Communications, if somebody is not laughing, <laughs> I still have them, by the way. 
so i'm watching who is laughing who is not laughing and then i might invite you for tea or coffee or something and instead of one i slip two or three <laughs> see you know the thing is how many people talk to yourself have you ever talked to yourself have you talked to a body part probably not i have i got used to talking to a body part because there was a glass of water here imagine there is a glass of water during my peak of parkinsons i want to pick up the glass of water i have to motivate my hand i'll say that i want to pick up the glass of water i think about it but the hand says no not now i said no i want it now he said no it's like a body as its own uh, democracy the central government is something state government is something else <laughs> it has its own rules and regulations or maybe it's waiting for a vote let me ask the knee what does it think i have no idea and it's like sometimes i think it's like labor union in action they are on strike i don't want to do it so things started going bad and bad and bad and then i got into the b2b business residential only which is residential within residence i go from bedroom to bathroom that's all that's it and then i stop and then people say that uh, you have, should have a beginner's body beginner's mind i had beginner's body so much that i used to wear diapers and use zippers now i am not wearing a diaper i can't prove it to you but i am not <laughs> so but zipper i use because it's so cool right i mean i can throw it and nothing the water never spills but uh, kavita says that you should stop using zipper i said no it's cool i'll use it and uh, i i am wearing this vest with very proud of it because i put the buttons on my own guru and lavanya can assess that i did it myself because it has four buttons in the bottom on the top and the shirt has six buttons and i remember it because earlier i could not put on the buttons now i am fascinated anything is there without buttons i don't even want to wear it because i can switch put on myself and uh, kavita was really sa- angry that i uh, don't stop fiddling with the buttons my friend said you should write a new book called button up <laughs> so there is lot of things that i learned the new uh, i got some props i am not a magician but i got some props do you know anybody know what is a fine print fine print is whatever is not fine you print it in small letters right so this is what is fine print i am showing this i used to take 32 tablets one of the fine print for one of the tablets is like this takes a while just in case you are not satisfied there is something in the back also <laughs> that is fine print for you thank you right so it looks like stephen king horror movie if i read the, all the side effects of the tablets i learn the it will be a one on one in biology class kidney liver heart spleen everything will get affected sometime or the other so best is to not read it and the, one of the side effects of parkinsons is depression but i never got it As doctor was surprised that you are never depressed i said no i don't read the fine print <laughs> why will i be depressed right so sometimes people say ignorance is bliss in this case it is it is bliss if you read it definitely you can't take a tablet if you take it, if you can't take a tablet you can't move so something has to go so this will go that's it and then lot of things uh, i l- relearned uh, do you know what is a staircase so for me it was a case of staring at the steps everything looked like mount everest i would first time uh, you lose balance right so your parkinsons is a movement disorder where you lose a lot of balance first time i tried to get down from the stairs on my own i fell down slight from the top to bottom i lost consciousness and then kavita put was putting water that's what i remember she was putting water to wake me up and she asked me 
what happened? I said, I remembered one thing. I said, I know why this is called flight upstairs. Some people fly down the stairs. She was not happy about it. I don't know why. Sometimes it's uh, really complicated. Understand woman is really complicated. Do you agree? I say that your wife is always right. If you don't, if you think otherwise, you are not very bright. In my case, uh, it is true. So, there is another word that I have. Whistleblower, does anybody know what is whistleblower? So, what is it? Exposes. In for Parkinson's, it's just this. You take a whistle and then hold like this, <laughs> blow it. Why? Because in the latest parts of the disease, no progression, you stop, you lose your voice. And the only way I could call Kavita or Sumuk was to blow the whistle. I used to blow the whistle so many times. There was a knock on the door. Neighbors were complaining that the little kids are making too much noise. Kavita had to tell them it's not the little kid, the big kid. <laughs> so uh, this is what happened. And then I st started losing confidence because you know you can't move a lot and the B2B business is not that good. And then uh, long distance running was from going from bedroom to bathroom. So it was all happening and I was thinking I was, I'm supposed to be the head of the household. And then what can I do to earn money, right? So I was thinking, what can slow people do that uh, fast people cannot do? And what can people who are shaking do better? Then I was thinking, I thought of a few jobs. Because uh, you belong to a community of people of who also has Parkinson's, who are doing a sympathy exchange, how bad your shaking is, and how bad my shaking is, how bad you are frozen, how bad I am frozen. But we said that this is too much. It's uh, always something or the other negative. Why don't we band together and go to the concrete mixing sites? And then hold the concrete mixer. That's about it. And then it'll mix by itself. And they'll save on power and all those things. But that didn't fly because, you know, that's too, weight is too much. And, but I thought, I never had a, I'm a teetotaler from, from, from a birth now. But I was thinking, cocktail mixing could be one of the things. Right, they could just give me the bottle and then I can, or at least milkshaker. I can just ask them to bring milk and then I hold it and then pass it on. Milkshaker on demand. And then I was thinking that in, uh, in a pharmacy, I think I can get a job, which is basically in many bottles, they will say that uh, shake well before use. I, I could start a service called shake and well before use. <laughs> shake and well as a service, right? So I thought of all those things. But nothing would work, and I was thinking, you know, uh, the people in, if you go look at the job uh, application, job uh, profile, they'll say, movers and shakers are required. I fit a half of it. I can get two jobs, and then get 50% from each of them, I'm a shaker. And then I get two jobs, and I'll get 100% of the salary. Coming to movers and shakers, my friend Sterling is a better writer, some of you know him. He also has Parkinson's. I told him, Sterling, of all the people, you should not have got Parkinson's. I said, uh, he said, thank you so much, but why me? Why, uh, thank you for saying it. I said, if you didn't get Parkinson's, we could co-write a book, it will be called Movers and Shakers. But now, if we write a book, it will be called Shakers and Shakers. And if you spell mis do spelling mistake, probably it will sell a few copies in Dubai. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Right, uh, so, but that didn't fly, right? So I used to, I was thinking, what else can people do? I mean, I could write my own book, Slow and Steady wins the race, but uh, no, Slow and Wobbly will win the race is uh, what it is. But that also people won't believe. I still remember uh, Kavita took me to, we, we tried so many things in, uh, as we, spend, we probably spent half a million dollars in um, uh, trying to do some uh, alternative therapies. Some one person said you should spend time with uh, cows. So we went to Goshala, and then nothing happened except that I became friends with cows. That's about it. And then while coming back, 
by that time kavita had to feed me with her own, with me, with her own hands for everything and uh, in the airport i remember in nashville i was walking like this like a drunkard and then uh, i was everybody was leaving space as if um, i was uh, i was thinking i was like a king everybody is giving space but really they were trying to avoid the drug addict they were thinking oh let's pull pull our children from there so um then uh, the whole life uh, i have tried to do comedy it, most of the bo- jokes bomb right so uh, when people ask me uh, how are you feeling i used to say shaken but not stirred and then people said you know james bond franchise can come and sue you i said oh that's not good so i said sometimes shaken never stirred <laughs> so and still people said there is some uh, some resemblance to james bond i said no 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 there is no resemblance because there is a point that will make a difference between me and james bond said he is 007 i am 0.007 that point now will make a lot of difference so uh, in the end uh, there was a time when kavita had to arrange me in the bed rather than arranging the bed uh, at that time i said i have to do the, get these two brain surgeries right so basically uh, I, i was avoiding it for one and a half years uh, the doctor was convincing me that i should get the brain surgery i was avoiding it because i asked him is there any problems that might happen he said no no, no there is not it's been doing we have been doing this for 10 years but uh, you have to put two electrodes in the brain uh, i am i'm even imagining the first time they come up with this idea how they could have discussed it let's open the skull insert two electrodes and then shock the brain shock the hell out of the brain i don't know how you thought of it like that but he said uh, it's it's been done it's uh, it is robot uh, robot assisted surgery and all those things and then but if it touches any of the blood vessels no then one or two organs might fail i said that's not a small thing <laughs> that's what made me avoid the surgery for one and a half years but then the alternative was not good it's like uh, living like a vegetable i said you know let me try it i still remember the time first for surgery was 5 and 5 hours 45 minutes at the good samaritan hospital my neuro neurologist is a chinese neurosurgeon is a pakistani doctor can bless his heart i'm so happy that uh, the surgery happened on february 9th and not after the asia cup defeat pakistan <laughs> because you never know right i mean two blood vessels one or two accidental touching and then uh, scores are settled luckily that didn't happen so i still remember the first surgery whatever little i can remember they gave me the anesthesia they took me to a hospital called good samaritan hospital operation room number 2 i'm saying this because nobody should go to operation room number 2 you'll see why they put the surgery i was losing consciousness but then some equipment stopped working and it's supposed to be microsoft equipment <laughs> i said they try to make practically making calls to microsoft and nothing is happening but then they call and he knows microsoft expert tina she came and she did something and it got fixed and i could still remember i said dr khan was asking you know what did you do oh no 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 it's not software issue i just tapped twice in this and then it started working i was thinking well, let's hope that she will not tap twice more and then it will stop working but luckily she went away and then the dr khan he said always amazed that uh, this machine still work on windows 95 and then i lost consciousness i said oh god <laughs> they are operating on windows 95 and then after the p- surgery was successful i put in the suggestion box please at least upgrade to windows nt <laughs> right otherwise it will be a problem so the next surgery was on february 14th on valentines day right so i was hoping that i'll not go to operation room number 2 i was hoping god don't take me to windows 95 machine <laughs> and then uh, it was operation room number 12 or 12 and it was good uh, basically dr khan came i was still having some consciousness and he was telling there were nine people assisting him one doctor one robot and nine people assisting the robot and the doctor 
and he asked, are you all feeling good today? I was thinking, what doctor? Now is not the time to ask the question. What if somebody says, no, I, I had a fight with my wife. I'm not feeling good today. <laughs> what will you do? He said, uh, I'm already there on the operating room table. So, and then I don't know whether Dr. Khan believes in Feng Shui or something. He said, I don't like the orientation of the operating table. Can you please turn it 90 degrees? And then I lost consciousness. And then after three hours, 45 minutes later, I woke up and the first thing I remembered was, what happened? Did they turn the operate orientation? I was asking the nurse, she was a black uh, woman. I was asking her, did they turn the table 90 degrees? I said, turn the table, what? What orientation? I said, no, no, before they went and lost unconsciousness, did they turn the table to 90 degrees? I know, I don't know what you are talking. And the other nurse who was passing by said, last 15 minutes, this guy is talking nonsense, ignore him. <laughs> so, but I still don't know. It will still be a mystery to me whether they turned it 90 degrees or not. That's all I had to say. You have been a great audience. Thank you very much. <laughs>